Here's a bit of a rhetorical question. I say rhetorical because I'm going to answer it, hopefully, uh, by means of this. How can you get such a conglomerate-style club like Classics and truly pull something unique and individual out of it? Uh, the reason I ask this is because I think what can sometimes turn people off is that they're always looking at what they can give to the club. That's what I do all the time. But really, I think that does a great disservice to the degree of freedom that it can also give you. So I would like to explain my thought process on how to make this club a very personal experience and one that can benefit both it and yourself. Because I think that is pretty important. Like, it's not the most important thing, but like, come on, it's, it's, it's pretty important. <laughs> Okay, so when I started out uh, in Classics uh, Exec, I had a pretty pretty irrelevant position. I think I was the, the junior academic head, and it was under a really good senior academic head at that. So they really, I was really picking up the, the bottom scrapings of whatever was going on. And I mean, to be fair, uh, back in the day, you know, there was just a lot more people, which meant the responsibilities get spread pretty thin the further down you go. And honestly, I was fine with that because I wasn't, and still am not really, a huge commitment guy. So it's it's remarkably easy to go through a whole year and really not accomplish much. And like, if that's the kind of person you are, that's fine. Oh, and also, what are you doing on exec? Not to be judgy, of course, but like, you kind of have to know what you're getting into here. Uh, but regardless, um, it would be pretty straightforward um, to dodge most of those responsibilities. But the reason I would advise against that is obviously not because it would be a disservice to the club. Although let's let you know, let's not mince words here. Uh, the reason is because I think you're throwing away a really good opportunity uh, to learn things about yourself. Uh, with that, I will segue to my grade 11 year, which was basically the opposite of the two years before, where the club was under some, some tense times and the responsibilities were being piled on pretty thick. Uh, and that basically gave me a chance to really delve into what made me passionate about this club. Because even if I wasn't doing much, I mean, I was still showing up. I still wanted to contribute something without really knowing how. And in my case, that kind of got slumped on top of me. But don't let that kind of language deceive you here because something happened in those first couple months of last year that really did connect and they created a remarkably positive experience out of admittedly a pretty crappy situation. And I think that kind of turnaround is something that is not only incredibly useful for anyone in any situation, but to me it's the quintessential classics motto of doing working with what you've got doing what you can and really making the club something um that you can relate to something that's really that you can call your own uh, i think i'll make that the tagline it's, it's just to make classics your own uh what i mean by that is that while the club does uh obviously ask you to do things very often the in-between steps are a bit light on the details we, we went through a huge project to document the procedures of major events uh, over COVID because we were worried all that stuff was going to get lost. But honestly, there are a lot of things that just aren't there. And that's because how you choose to run those things is really something you can only discover yourself. That sounds kind of lame and cheesy, but I'm being deadly serious here. Um, the way that the club operates in my eyes is that as an exec member there is a certain degree of obligation to which you are held. If, if you're an academic person, it means that you do the academic things. If you're the secretary treasurer, like you work with the money and the meetings and attendance. And to that degree, you are held to the club. But beyond that, and even in the steps between the start and finish, you can basically do as you see fit. Um, 
admittedly, I am the president, which means in theory, I'm supposed to be, you know, watching over and providing feedback and stuff. But to be honest, I don't care too much about the method so long as there are results. And that was sort of the way that the president before me, um, Senor Kio, uh, took his approach, uh, which was let people do what they're going to do because he knows the same thing that I know. And that's if you do it the way you want, not only will you find much greater success, but it will also mean a lot more to you. Uh, in my case, that if that means writing the most suspicious and cursed junior trivia questions the world has ever seen, so be it. That was my way of not only getting through an admittedly difficult time, but also taking something very classic about classics and making it a personal thing as well, uh, showing my love for the, the long-gone subject of vocab, gone but not forgotten, of course, uh, as well as showing that this club can be a fun place uh, just by maybe not scaring people, at least I hope it wasn't scary, but showing that it isn't just a stock standard competition, because it wasn't for me. Uh, I got my share of sketchy questions in, in my grade 10 year, in fact, and that was really powerful. And then I got to give that back. And all of a sudden, what was this maybe mundane event for some became something not only that I was fascinated with, but something that I was bent on, on giving back to people. It really did mean a lot. So I did some thinking about why that was, because I remember those early years when I didn't get that at all, even though I was in junior trivia and remember how fun the questions were. I didn't see myself in the opposite position where I would have to help other people out. Like that, I, I don't, you couldn't even imagine me being like on exec still in grade in grade 12 like by the time that second year is winding around like I had a busy schedule I had things to do and I think the reason that I was so content on just dropping that is because it really didn't mean anything at the time it was just oh you, you show up once a week someone tells you to do something you know maybe you do it maybe you get a little, little round of applause that kind of feedback cycle really doesn't work because then it's like a chore it's like a job you do it you get something of negligible value back. Like, I, I don't know if people accept um, smiley faces as a form of currency, but I'm imagining most people probably don't. It also depends on your level of commitment, obviously. Some people do put a lot of work in. And if you don't get those returns, I mean, it could be a bit disheartening. Trust me, I know. So it's important to find facets of the club that are rewarding in their own kind of way. And the reason I can't tell you what that kind of way is because it really depends on the person. In my case, um, the reward is seeing the nine's confused faces as I ask questions that don't make sense and then watching a couple of the smartest among them crack my cryptic codes and figure out that, of, of course, it's a very reasonable question. You just have to read like 10,000 syllabus pages about derivatives that kind of reward is something that probably doesn't work for most other people and that's okay that's what being an individual is but it goes to show that there's more than one way you know to get your work back uh, i put in all the time to write all those weird questions because i knew somebody was going to figure them out and it would give them as much joy as i did uh when i first had to get my sketchy um, broken shoes questions. I don't know why I have to call them that, but um, for future reference, um, whenever someone asks you a sketchy vocab question, just call it a broken shoes question. No, no one needs to know why. Regardless, um, with this year of exec, we have a particularly interesting degree of freedom uh, because of the lack of people, first of all. It just means... Uh, the responsibilities are more spread out and less well-defined. Like, creatives and athletics, that's gone. So if we want to do something like, hey, let's do speed painting, let's do a Roman day, my question would be, who who handles that? Now that is definitely a question that I have been grappling with because I have tried to get people on board with various projects and it is sometimes very hard to see, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> 
people willing to jump on those bandwagons and work their butts off, especially because with the way events have been going this year, they might not see those returns. So my challenge would be find ways uh, to appreciate them regardless, because the ultimate goal of having a person run these events isn't that the event goes well or even happens at all, although, again, those things are preferable, to say the least. But they should be a valuable experience for the person organizing them. Um, I remember sitting in Discord calls with all the, the other ACK heads last year. We were talking about uh, syllabuses and crappy Microsoft Paint drawings for all of the educational pamphlets. And in those moments, it didn't really matter to me who was going to read them. It didn't matter to me if anyone was going to read them, because we made those for ourselves. We were having a really rough year. Uh, you know, we were all sitting at home, like, without any real meaningful connections. And just in those moments, we were together. We were doing things that we enjoyed. And again, I don't think it was because, um, ultimately, we're fostering the nines. Although, that is definitely what we were doing. And that is rewarding in its own special way. But it also meant a lot to us as people. Uh, like, we saw each other as a group of friends, not just, like, some co-workers choring away on some chore. It really did feel like uh, a group of dedicated and passionate people doing what they loved. And I think that's what rubbed off on a lot of the people that chose to stay in classics, because I think that stuff shows more than just, you know, the level of knowledge you have in derivatives. Like, those questions have heart in them, and I think that's visible to most people. And having experienced those, that's the thing that I want to give back to the club more than anything. And what would give me the greatest reward is to be able to turn around and say that somebody was able to feel the same way about these truly awful trivia questions that I did. Now, I've been using myself as example the whole time, just to kind of make my point, but it's really worth reiterating. Your journey through the club is going to look different in so many unimaginable ways. Like, maybe your thing is through the different artistic events or all the little models you can make in creatives. Maybe it's um, being able to, I don't know, run the movie nights, uh, being able to fill people with the wonder of cinema, if that's your thing. Again, this is not meant like to pass judgment on people's interests. In fact, what this club should do is give you a place to foster those interests. Like I said, as an exec person, you are held to a certain level of responsibility for certain things. But again, beyond that, you can do as you want. So find those opportunities in the things that you do to put something that you can really say is yours. Because that will make those events rewarding to you no matter what happens. Because you'll always have been able to satisfy something within yourself. And the reason I emphasize that so hard in these times is because we've seen a lot of events go down the toilet. A lot of things crash to ruin. And you can imagine that that's something really hard to watch. Because if you're just in it to see the event through the end, having that not happen basically makes it for nothing. Like, there was no, nothing gained. Uh, you've put in a lot and got back nothing. Like, and again, believe me, that's something hard to see. Not hard to see. I'll get my words mixed up. So, regardless, if you find something unique and interesting within the event itself, just in the process of planning it, you know, in the process of talking with your friends, in the process of um, getting to know uh, this group of amazing people, then what does it matter how it ends up at the end? Maybe you feel sad that the team you liked didn't win, or you felt sad that maybe you lost a couple people along the way, or the movie night didn't go perfectly seamlessly, maybe someone spilled the popcorn everywhere. Like, lots of bad things are going to happen. And believe me, as someone who has to sit through uh, MD getting second at um, the only conference I've ever been at, like, <laughs> dealing with loss is, is very much part of the, the classics experience. But that stuff doesn't matter to us because when I think about what makes those kinds of events great, it's not the fact that we took home a crap ton of ribbons. But again, <laughs> I do feel the need to say it did feel pretty good. But it was the people that I was there with 
that really made me feel like this was a club. Like, the events don't make it a club. It's the people that are behind those things, that are working together to plan it. It's sort of like a way of teaching you how to be a leader. Like, obviously there's leadership clubs and stuff, but they don't give you that degree of, here, let's just, let's run a junior trivia, see what happens. Let's, let's go write some questions. Let's draft up a syllabus. It's very, very hands-on in terms of the approach to leading, but it's also hands-off in that it lets you do it the way you want. So you can discover what parts of it that you like, what your wheelhouse is and being able to do these kinds of things. It won't be easy, but it's a personal journey and like you will grow as a person by the end of it. I guess the reason I'm so emotional about this is because um, just a couple of nights ago, I was digging through the old, um, all of our old video files and I can, you can find like compilations of clips from past conferences, from Saturnalia's and like, you can imagine the background of Latin or mythology knowledge behind all that, but in those moments, none of that makes a difference. It's just, it's a bunch of people yelling, singing songs, doing truly weird things. And that is what makes it so special. I feel like I'm treading a lot on old ground when I say this. This is not a new revelation, but I think it's a valuable insight in thinking about how you choose to run the club. Because if I will not be the last person to run the club. At least I hope not. Let, let, let's hope it doesn't get that bad. Um, but again, um, how each person runs it is going to be different. So all I can really tell them is find out what parts are important to them, what puts that fire in their stomach, because if they can find those things, not only will the things they do bring them more satisfaction instead of just leading to disappointment, but it also gives them the willpower to actually see it through. I think the reason a lot of people are unwilling to take on all these extra events, aside from potential lack of experience because of COVID and whatnot, is just because it's really hard to see what the benefits are. You're like, well, what's, what, what's in it for me? What am I really going to get? Um, and like I said, without that passion, it's really hard to imagine someone growing as a person because they're running it, because the, their heart's not in it. They're not really taking it too seriously. The problem with this approach is that it's a very individual process. Obviously, I want to be there to support as many people as possible, and that's what I have been doing. Uh, but the thing with these kinds of leadership opportunities is that they're more a personal thing. I can't force somebody to think about the way they like to lead. I can't tell somebody what that is for them. So it's a bit of a risk, I guess, with telling people to just go out there do what they can and, and find their passions because it's like, not everyone's going to be able to do it. But I think it would be foolish for me to just assume people can take everything standing up uh, with that same passion because that's, that's not true, unfortunately. And that is why I implore people to look for that because I think what I've realized over trying to run what few events we have is that in order for, for it to really feel like a success, it doesn't matter how it ends up by the end of it. All that matters is that I can look at the people that ran and I say, hey, you did a good job. And honestly, like it's, it's hard to do a bad job. If, like, if, you, if you put what you've got into it, you will see returns of some capacity. All right, so in conclusion, I don't, really, I don't know how to end these things ever, but in, in conclusion, what makes Classics great as a club is that it gives you a chance to explore things about yourself. Um, obviously, what we want out of these events is to have some level of returns for the rest of the club so that it may improve in some way. But I think it'd be foolish to imagine that's the only thing of value that you would get out of being on exec because I certainly wouldn't show up to a club where everything I do is just for the club and I get nothing and then I go home and I'm tired. Um, what I think sets this club apart and what makes it great is that you have an opportunity 
to learn about yourself and the way that you lead and the way that you learn and the way that you can inspire other people. It is a very unique opportunity, but the only way to really appreciate it is to change how you think about um, growing as a person, how you think about what it means to be a club, what it means like to have friends. I would know. <laughs> but it really requires that sort of shift in perspective to understand what kind of things you can get out of the club. Because without that, maybe you can't see those things. And you'd have a much harder time understanding why do these people put so much time into writing roasts for each other at a barbecue? Why the heck do they have a cookie? What's, what's the cookie for? What do they do? Like that stuff is complete nonsense. And that's the point. It was some person that sat down and said, and said to themselves, <laughs> wouldn't that be so funny? And they did. And they went right ahead and people did it. And it endeared people more to the club. Maybe it didn't make us better at conferences, but it made us closer as people, as friends. And that is what we're more worried about this year. So all I can really hope for by the end of this club is maybe it's not the most successful. Maybe it doesn't, it doesn't have all the events we want. Maybe it all goes up in flames, but it is still a club. There are still people and they still feel like they're friends because if that is still there, it doesn't matter what the club goes through because those people will always be there. And I just think that is maybe a bit corny, but truly amazing and sort of a testament to what people can do if they really push themselves. Okay, I'm tired now. I'm going to go take a nap for five hours. And then after that, I'll do junior trivia, I promise. <laughs>